All right, we are in 2 Corinthians tonight. In chapter 5, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, it's a really good chapter, really to, when someone dies, uh, 2 Corinthians 5 is a good chapter. We know that if our earthly ta house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God, a house not made uh, with hands eternal in the heavens. That's a tremendous verse. We, uh, when someone passes, that, that is a good, particularly a Christian, saved person. We want to look tonight down a little farther in the chapter and Second Corinthians chapter 5 and let's stand, shall we? we? We shall read beginning in verse 9, Second Corinthians chapter 5 verse 9, wherefore we labor that whether present or absent we may be accepted of him, for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. Knowing, therefore, the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. But we are made manifest unto God, and I trust also are made manifest in your conscience. For we commend not ourselves again unto you, but give you occasion to glory on our behalf, that ye may have somewhat to answer them which glory in appearance and not in heart. For whether we be beside ourselves, it is to God, or whether... We be sober. It is for your cause, for the love of Christ constraineth us, because we thus judge that if one died for all, then we're all dead, and that he died for all. They which live should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them and rose again. Lord, we thank you for your word. Tonight, I pray you would encourage us by it. Lord, we thank you for this evening, and Lord, for the folks who have come out tonight. And Lord, I pray that you would encourage us in these few minutes. Uh, Lord, encourage us, we pray. Lord, as we think on this particular subject tonight, Lord, I pray you'd help us. Lord, I, I pray tonight uh, for Bristol Lord, I believe that that big tent meeting, I know they put the tent up yesterday. And Lord, I know they're expecting and looking for great things from thee. I'm not sure how long that tent meeting with Brother Townsend is supposed to last. But Father, I pray that you would bless and Lord, that there would be, Lord, a harvest of souls. Lord, the sad thing about being in the South is that you talk to a lot of people and they all think they're saved. Uh, so I, I pray that you would bring uh, great conviction there, and I pray, Lord, that you would uh, do a work there, and, Father, that people would be saved. We're not sure of the hour, but we believe the hour to be late, probably later than we think. Um, Lord, I, I, I pray for the Bristol revival, God, that you would visit them and that you would do a work there. Lord, I pray for... Our Jerusalem, I pray for our Judea, I pray for our Samaria. Lord, that you would help us here. Uh, Lord, most, most, not everybody, Lord, but most people uh, don't give, do not give much thought to their eternal destiny. Uh, Lord, and I pray, our prayer is that, Lord, you would work. Lord, I'm not sure how you work. I mean that, Lord, I'm not sure how you work in the lives of lost people. Lord, I do not believe that you overpower them. I do not believe that you force them, as some may believe. But, Lord, I'm not sure how you work in the hearts of people. So, Lord, all we'll do is pray for people. Pray for the salvation of souls in this late hour. The hour is, is late and time is of the essence. And so I pray that you would, Lord, help us here. Lord, I probably not the time to pray for our radio program, but Lord, I pray for our radio program, Lord, that somebody would hear it this week, and Lord, that they would be saved. Father, I pray for all the people that were in church today, Lord, I, I would suspect that there were probably some here, no, Lord, I don't suspect it, I know that there were some here that were not saved. 
And I realize that, Lord, the majority of people that come, Lord, if you preach a salvation message, that most of the time you're preaching to the choir. But, Lord, I, I pray for those who, who attend our church, some on a regular basis, that, Lord, probably are not saved. Lord, we, we pray for us. We pray for this place. pray for the preacher. We pray for the people. Lord, that attend here. Lord, that you would encourage us. Oh, God, I pray that you would encourage us. I pray for those who could not be here. Lord, some could not be here tonight. They just, they, they could not be. And so, Lord, for them we pray. Lord, that you would meet the need of their heart. Lord, for those who could be here. Lord, probably the message tonight is for them. Probably not even for us. But, Lord, I pray that we would take heart by it and be heartened by it and that, Lord, we might consider these things tonight and, Lord, that we might stand, Lord, taking, taking heed lest we, we fall and not fall from grace, but, Lord, fall from our standing, from our position, which is highly possible. Lord, I pray for that church that lost the pastor two weeks ago. And then, Lord, I pray for the church in Syracuse. Brother Dixon was the pastor there. He died this week. I don't know whether it was suddenly, unexpected, or what happened. Lord, I just know that Jim Dixon died this week. And so, Lord, we pray for that church there. Lord, they're without a preacher now. And so, Father, I pray for that. And, Lord, I think of New York State tonight. Lord, there's, there are churches without preachers all over New York State. Lord, that need preachers. Father, I pray for New York. Now, Lord, help us tonight. Lord, bless we pray in these few moments in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Verse 10 says this, For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. Everybody. Now, note, note that Paul is speaking here to Christians. That everybody, everybody in this room, if you're saved tonight, if you're not saved tonight, you're going to appear before God to be judged. If you are saved tonight, you are going to appear before God. Verse 10 says we must all, all, all of us, everybody, all, everybody in this room tonight is going to appear at the judgment seat. Now, the judgment seat is not for our sins. The Hebrews makes it clear that our sins and iniquities, he'll remember no more. Everything that we have all of our sins are forgotten. They're, they're washed away. They're put away. As far as the east is from the west, God does not remember them anymore. They're, they're gone. They're, they're forever gone. And so when we appear at this judgment seat of Christ, it's not to be judged for our sins. Our sins have been judged. Sometimes that's really hard for us to grasp that our sins are gone. They're, they're washed away. They're underneath the blood of the cross of Calvary as far as... As far removed as, uh, how's that? as far removed as darkness is from dawn. In the sea of God's forgetfulness, that's good enough for me. Praise God, my sins are gone. Now, I, I know that there are people who object to that. There, there are a lot of people who object to that. But Paul, and Paul said this, shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid, how shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? And so this judgment seat that is speaking about here, that all of us, every saved, born-again, blood-washed saint, is going to appear at someday, as Paul says, that we may receive the things done in his body, what it is that we have done. I, I have repeatedly said that the basis that you will be judged for, the basis that I will be judged for, is, number one, why we have done what we have done. Why did we do what we do? Why did we teach Sunday school? Was it, well, I'm just, whatever. Or did we do it for the Lord? I remind all the Sunday school teachers, I remind the, the, the people that work in junior church, you're dealing with eternity. You're dealing with the souls of little boys and girls. Why do we do what we do? Well, it was just something to do. And secondly, this, have we been faithful to the opportunity that we've been given? Why did we do what we do? Jesus said in John 15, for without me you can do nothing. Did we do it simply to be done, or did we do it for Jesus? And secondly, 
Have we been faithful to the opportunity? The opportunity can involve many areas of our life. Have we been faithful as a husband? Have we been faithful as a wife? Have we been faithful as, as uh, parents? Have we been faithful as, as uh, 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 members of the body of Christ? Have we been faithful to that? And so verse 10 tells us that we may receive everybody, 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 everybody is going to be judged. You're going to be judged. I'm going to be judged. As a preacher, I will be judged. According to Hebrews chapter 13, that I might give an account for you, that I might do it with joy and not with grief. I'm going to give an account for you. Ah, the Lord's going to ask me about you, and I'm going to tell him about you, and, and, you know, that I might give it with joy. Well, Lord, you know, Joe Smith, boy, he just, I tried to warn him, tried to tell him, Lord, but he didn't listen. I'm going to have to give an account. Now, that every one of us may receive the things that we have done, what we have done as Paul says there, in his body. Now again, I remind you, that is not for our sins. They have been judged. They are gone. They are washed away. I've heard people say this. I've heard Christians say this. I've heard saved people say this many times. I'm going to have a whole heap of things to answer for when I stand before God. No, you're not. No, no you're not. You'll be clothed in the righteousness of Christ and that your sins, your sins are going to be gone. Now, there will be things that you and I will be judged for, things that we have done. Now, I'm, not, I'm saying this to you, knowing that you're sitting here tonight, knowing that you're here. But people give up. People have ex all kinds of crazy excuses. I, I'm sure as a teacher... Ryan gets all kinds of excuses from her kids as to why they didn't do th certain things. You know, the old, the old one is, my dog ate my homework. You know, well, I, my dog ate my homework. I did my homework, but I left it out. My dog ate it. Now, I've had a lot of homework assignments, and I had dogs, but I don't think my dog ever ate my homework. A lot of times, people just say, well, I forgot. I forgot. If I said to, if I said on the radio today, if I said during church or Sunday school today when we're broadcasting, that the first 100 people that come through the door of the church on Monday morning at 9 o'clock are going to receive a $500 bill. How many people do you think would forget that? Well, I forgot to do my homework. I just... If it's important, you don't usually forget it. You don't usually forget that which is important. The problem, as I see it many times, is Luke chapter, I think it's chapter 7, when Jesus said to Simon, Simon, seest thou this woman, since I came in, she has not ceased to wash my hair, uh, or wash my feet with the, with her, with the hair of her head and, and anoint my feet. But he said, you didn't do any of that for me. He asked him the question, when, when somebody is forgiven, one guy is forgiven, uh, 500, one guy is forgiven 50, who do you think will love more? And Simon said, well, to whom much is forgiven? And Jesus said, thou hast rightly answered. Uh, to whom much is forgiven, the same loveth much. I, I, I see the, our, our problem in, in Christianity today uh, among saved people, among saved people is that they, they have a lot of excuses and the excuses uh, that they, they have, it, it boils down to that uh, they do not see how much that they have been forgiven. I want you to think for a minute uh, tonight, over the years, people that you have known that have, that have quit. And, I, and I, I've heard all kinds of stories about why people uh, quit on God. They just, they just plain quit on God. That, it, it, just put it down, mark it down. Uh, I've heard, you know, I, I, know, I know of, uh, people quit church because people won't eat their food uh, at church dinners. Uh, that they, one Sunday here not too long ago, somebody brought something and, and I didn't eat any of it. And from the looks of it, nobody ate any of it. Uh, it, it could have been squash, I don't know what it was, but it was something. And, and I wasn't taking a chance. You know, I'm not taking a chance. And, and, uh, that, but I don't think anybody ate any of it. I, 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 
you know, I felt bad for the person. I felt really badly for them. Well, nobody ate anything, and, you know, they go home. Nobody ate any of my food today. Nobody ate any of my food. I'm not ever going back to that church. Now, you think about this for a minute. You're going to stand before Christ, and you're going to say that to him. I quit going to church, Lord, because nobody ate my food. And the Lord's going to stand there and say, really? Really? That's the best you got? You quit on me. You gave up on me because somebody didn't eat your food at a church dinner. Well, well, best I got. How, how silly. Now that person did, and they, they, they still, but I, I, I know, I know people. I know of people who quit on God because somebody, I'm telling you right now, if all there was was squash next week, I'm telling you, I'm going home for a honey bun. I'm not going to eat that. Now, I don't want you to feel badly about it, but I'm not going to eat it. Now, look. People say, well, that's a pretty lame preacher. But wait a minute. Somebody going to stand before God and say, I didn't get recognized in church for something I did. Well, what did you do? Well, well I mean, the Lord said, well, what did you do? Well, I washed some dishes one Sunday. And, and nobody recognized you for that, right? Right. And so you quit, right? Yeah, yeah, I quit because... Really, you quit, and you can put it on anything, and that sounds kind of silly, but well, let's, let's take it a, a, even a, a step farther and say, well, I've cleaned church, I've cleaned church a lot of times, and nobody ever said anything to me about cleaning church. Well, I'm saying something now. I appreciate everybody that cleans church. I mean that. For everybody that, that has to wash the bathrooms and empty the trash and vacuum, and, and I want you to know that I appreciate that. I do appreciate that. And I notice, I know I come over here and I notice. Number one, I notice if it smells good. If it smells good, I know somebody's been over here cleaning. I look at the carpet. Oh, the carpet's been vacuumed. That looks really good. I walk in the back and, man, the bathroom smells good, everything. I want you to know that I appreciate that. Yeah, but you never came up to me and said it personally. You never personally said it. And I quit. Now, I know that you wouldn't do that. But I'm saying that, that there are people... Well, for example, this. Now, we're all going to appear before the judgment seat of Christ, every one of us. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll say this. I know this actually happened to me. This happened to me. When I'm driving down the road, some of you I recognize. I recognize some of you that are driving. I know what vehicle you drive. If I see you driving down the road, if I, if I see that little red uh, roller skate coming down the road, I... Got a pretty good idea. That's matters, family. You know, I, I see that coming down the road, or I see a big white van. I kind of, I look to see if it's him. There are several big white vans down the southern end of the county. I kind of recognize Wayne's truck. I, there are a lot of silver Ford trucks, uh, but I, I'm always waving like that just in case it's him, because here's what happened. One day I passed a guy that went to church. And I did not wave at him. I did not wave at him. And he got mad, and he quit coming to church. Now, you're going to tell me, when you stand before God, and he asks you, well, the preacher didn't wave at me. Really? Really? You're going to tell me that you gave up on me because the preacher did not wave at you? Well, Lord, that's the best of God. How silly is that going to be? Now, we, we can take that to any extreme, and you, you can take it to almost any area. If you have a church, and I realize our church is not a mega church. I understand that. I understand we have... We do have a fair amount of people. If, if an outsider were to come in, they would say, well, you don't have a small church, particularly on Sunday morning when I have a small church. 
And uh, there are a lot of people coming. There, there is every possibility that somebody is going to get offended. For example, Pete always sits in the same place. Always the same place. Royce always sits in the same place. Unless somebody is sitting in his place. Uh, Royce has sat in that place so long that the back of the pew is conformed to his back. He's sat there so many times. There's every opportunity for someone to get offended. People say things, most of the time people say things, and they don't really mean anything. Sometimes I think, you know, people are trying to be hurtful, spiteful. Sometimes it's that way. I, but by and large, in, in any large family, in any large family, and as we've repeatedly said, uh, we, we're not coming to church. We're going to meet with a family on Sunday morning. That's what we're doing. I know that with my brothers and I, over the last, I've known my brothers, I know my brother Pat for 65 years. Over 65 years, we have said things, done things that, that offend one another. Um, done some things maybe that hurt the other guy's feelings. Um, my brother Keith, I've known since 1958. I don't even, that's, what, 60 years. I've known my brother for 60 years. And uh, we, as brothers go, we like to really, you know, bust on one another. Um, that, that's just what we do. I mean, we do that. And sometimes people get offended. Sometimes brother might get offended, but after a little while, it's right back to laughing, joking, and busting on one another again, calling each other names, uh, doing that kind of thing. So why do you do that? Well, that's what's what we did. Uh, that's, we're highly competitive, and that's what we did. Uh, we used to play ball. We used to play ball every night. Ask my wife, every night we would play ball. As soon as I get home from work, man, we're off to play ball. We're off to play ball. Highly competitive, highly competitive. Sometimes get mad, sometimes throw the glove, sometimes throw the ball, sometimes throw the bat. But after a while, we'd get over it, and we'd be right back, right back at it again. I, when my brother Bob, I, I've said this, my, my brother Bob and Gary got in a fight over a fan one night. I, I literally thought Bob was going to rip the door down to get at my brother Gary. I just thought he was. Carol... We, we were there that night, and I mean, Bob was like a mad dog. I mean, that's how bad it was. And of course, Gary's laughing. He's just, ha, 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 you know, which only made Bob uh, madder, uh, more angry. Dogs get mad, people get angry. So he, he, was, he was, you know, very angry. But got over it. When people come to church, when we come to church here, there's every opportunity. I know this for a fact. I know this. I know a lot of things, but I know this for a fact. That there are, there are people who look at other people in our church and they don't come because of those people. Say, preacher, is it me? Is it me, preacher? Preacher, no, no, no. But you're going to tell me. We must all, we must all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. Look. It says it's a fearful thing. I, as, as a kid, and if you know that, if you've ever tried to read my handwriting, I can't even read my handwriting. It's uh, so pitiful sometimes. Um, I was in second grade. I, I was in second grade. Her name was Miss Kunkel. Uh, she was my second grade teacher, and we were doing math. Uh, we were doing arithmetic. And I, uh, I, I, I just, look, my wife says, well, it's your own fault. If you practice, you can do better. At this point, the ball game is a little late. But, you know, I was like, so I did a page of math, I did it real, and she took and she said, that's not good enough, do it over. All right. So I did it over. I showed it to her, she said, do it over. I did it over. I showed it to her a third time, she said, do it over. 
I did it over a fourth time. The fifth time, she said, okay. So I went back to my seat, and I scribbled out the other four times I, I had done it. The only problem was, somehow or other, I had scribbled out the one that she said was okay and brought the other one back up. Boy, was she ever mad. She, she, I know they don't do this anymore. I know Ryan can't do this. She grabbed me by the ear and pulled me across, and then she said, go get your brother. Now, I'm in the second grade. Pat was in kindergarten. So I had to walk and get my brother and bring him down there to, her, to the room. She took that paper and she wrote on it, Mrs. Jenkins, this is what your son did for an hour. And then she gave it to my brother and my brother had to take it home. Now, I took my time going home. I took every back street, every side alley that I took. It, we lived in Baltimore and so we walked to school. I live, I live, literally, I live a, a half a block from the school. It took me an hour to get home. When I finally walked through the door, my mother was standing there. She was fixing supper. And she proved to be a mom that day. Because she looked at me and said, wow, that was really Something wasn't it. I said, yeah. But I was afraid to go home. I, I, didn't, I didn't want to have to face my mom because of my stupidity. Yet, as sure as I was going to go home and meet mom, we are going to stand at the judgment seat of Christ and we are going to give an account. The Bible says this uh, in, in 1 Corinthians 3, or 2 Corinthians, it's 2 Corinthians 4 or 3, one of those says, So shall every man give account of himself to God. You're going to give an account of yourself. I, I know that there are people who do not come to this church because they look at other people. I, 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 let's take Mrs. Ward, for example. She's over there, sitting by herself. Everybody can look at her and make her feel badly. But it's like, we, we kid, I, I don't think, Mrs. Ward has gotten one ticket in her life, right? The time you didn't pull over for the policeman. That law that says if the policeman's here, you got to pull into the next lane, run that guy off the road, uh, just so you can give that guy. And I understand the law. You know, people don't pull over at the possibility of hitting the policeman or whatever. But we kid Mrs. Ward about all the speeding tickets that she has gotten over her life. I don't know whether you, whether you know it now. Or you, I guess you, she has never gotten a speeding ticket. Have you? Never have. Never gotten a speeding ticket. Mrs. Ward said, I'm not going back to that church. Pete Fitzgerald, and it's all Pete's fault. It's not the preacher's fault. It's all Pete's fault. He's all the time talking about your speeding tickets. I'm just repeating what I said. That is why some people don't come to church here. And I'm sure it's true everywhere. Mrs. Ward said, I'm not going back there. Lord says, you quit going to church because they kidded you about speeding tickets? Well, Lord, that's the best I got. That's why I quit. What kind of a lame excuse is that going to be? We all, all of us, I, look, have I been offended in church? Yep, I sure have. I love Pete. I love Pete dearly. If I had a, if, if my dad was alive, he'd be a lot like Pete. I, I love Pete dearly. I love him like I love my own dad. Like, I love my own dad. But one day, Pete was sitting up here on this piano stool. Not the piano, on the stool. He wasn't sitting on the piano, but he was sitting on the stool. And I, I came walking across the front, and Pete asked me a question. I don't remember what the question was. I can't remember the question. 
it was really it was a harmless question. But my immediate thought was, what does he really want? He really, you know, the question is not really the question. There is something more that Pete wants to know, but he's not really going to come out and ask me. And so I'm thinking to myself, what does that rascal really want? If you go to church long enough, you're going to get offended. I, got, I was offended, and, and I was offended for absolutely no reason with Pete that day. I really don't remember what the question was, but I still remember to this day Pete sitting there and asking me that question. There are people who have quit church over really just silly. Well, they didn't eat. I know for a fact they didn't eat my pie. They did not eat my pie. They didn't eat my pie. Really? You're going to tell Jesus that you quit because somebody didn't eat your pie. Well, Lord, it's all I got. That's why I quit, Lord. For we must all give account of ourselves. It's Romans 14. So shall every man give account. Because all of us are going to stand at the judgment seat of Christ to receive the things that we have done, whether they be good or whether they be bad. Now that's not talking about our sins. That's talking about, well, I quit because somebody sat in my seat. That's true. That's happened. Somebody sat in my seat. I'm never going back to that church. Everybody sits in the same place almost all the time. The stereos came this morning. They said on the back row, it's a good thing the Hubbards weren't here, or they got offended and left. The preacher didn't wave to me. That preacher's the most unfriendly guy. I know that. I don't even like the preacher sometimes. That preacher's the most unfriendly guy. I know I was going down the road 70 miles an hour, and he was going 60, and he didn't wave to me. I'm never going back. Really? Really? You're, gonna, you're going to give up on God, give up on Christ? Really? And you're going to use that as an excuse someday? I don't get all the proper recognition I should get. Can I remind you that God is not forgetful to, re, uh, to remember your, your labor of love? He's not forgetful. He'll remember it. He's writing it down in that book of remembrance. You did something at church when nobody may paid any attention to what I did. So, you want your reward here or you want it there? Well, I want somebody to tell me what a great person I am. Well, do you want somebody to tell you here? Do you want to hear Jesus say, well done, thou good and, remember, well good and faithful servant? Well, Lord, I just got tired. I, I, Lord, I just got tired of going to church. I got tired of reading my Bible. I often wonder what happened to Demas. I know that this is what, you know, the Bible says twice that he was a, a co-worker with Paul, but the last we read in 2 Timothy 4, that Demas hath forsaken me, and I, I know it says this, having loved the present world. He loved the present world. Lord, I just got tired of the church thing. I got, I got tired of the offering thing. I got tired of the Bible reading thing. I got tired. And Lord, I, got, I just got tired. Pete and I have sung many times. I traveled down a lonely road, and no one seemed to care. The burdens on my weary back had bowed me to despair. I oft complained to Jesus how folks were treating me. And then I heard him say so tenderly, well, Lord, you know, I just got tired. There was a lot of responsibility. I, I you know, the preacher asked things of me. Lord, you asked things of me. Really? Really, that, that's what you're going to say? The Bible says this, and not only in Galatians chapter 6, let us not be weary in well-doing, but it also says, I believe in 2 Corinthians 4, that, that seeing that we have this ministry, we faint not. 
we, we, don't, we, we don't give up. I, I've, I said several Sundays ago, there are two principles that I live by. One, I love God. I love God. In loving God, I love my wife, I love my family, I love my boys, which are my family. I love my church, I love everybody in the church, and that there is very little that I would not do for my church family. That's one principle that I, I do live by. The other one is this. I have been knocked down many times in my life. Things that really just floored me. But I refuse to stay knocked down. Let us not grow weary in well-doing. Well, Lord, I just got tired. I, I just tired. I, I talk with people sometimes, and, man, I can hear it in their voice. I can see it in their face. That Man, they're tired. Everybody gets tired. Well, Lord, best I got is I just got tired and gave up. Really? Really? That's what you're going to say when you stand before him one day. I got offended. Really? Somebody didn't smile at me. Really? Somebody didn't wave at me. Really? Somebody talked nasty to me. Really? You, you, that's really what you're going to say when we all give an account to him. Really? When you're a kid, you come up with all kinds of excuses. Um, Dad would always tell me, now this is the way I want you to do it. Mom would always tell me this. Mom would say this to me. This is the way I want you to sweep the floor. I want you to sweep the floor this way. And I would say, well, I can do it like this. No, I want you to do it like this. Well, it's the same thing. No, do it like this. Dad would tell me, I want you to do something like this. Well, Dad, I know an easier and quicker way, which was always wrong. But I would always say, well, I know an easier and quicker way. Well, wait a minute. And, you know, Dad, they would always call me, uh, you know, they would, they would always call me what they call me. You nitwit. No, I don't know what they would call me, but they would say, I told you to do it like this. People get offended. They get offended at the preacher. Well, this is what I'd like you to do. I've, I've never said this is what I want you. This is what I'd like you to do. Well, I got offended at the preacher. Really? Really, that's what you're going to say when you stand before him and you have to give an account? Really? Come on. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ that every one may receive the things that he hath done in his body, whether they be good. But we're going to get some good things. Or bad, as Paul says in 1 Corinthians 3, we'll suffer loss. We'll suffer loss. We're all going to give an account. The preacher's going to give an account. We're all going to give an account. Let us not be weary in well-doing. Let's not be weary and well done. For in due season we shall reap. We shall reap. If we faint not. If we don't give up. If we don't run up the white flag of surrender. I just had enough. Can't take it. Lord, the best excuse I've got. Not much of an excuse, but it's the only one I've got. Really? Really? Father, we thank you again for another evening. We thank you, Lord, for all you've done for us, Lord. Lord, we travel down a weary road and no one seems to care. But you care. You care. Lord, the burdens on our back bow us. We complain. But really, Lord, when we think about all that you've done for us, the scars, the beating, the abuse, the nastiness, the snarkiness, the slapping, the, the ridicule. You could have just said, well, I had enough. I'm tired of it. You could have called 10,000 angels 
to destroy the world, but you didn't. You died alone. 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 On that tree. And all had forsaken you. When all the disciples had fled. Alone. Alone. By yourself. Bearing our sin burden. Lord, help us be reminded that we shall all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. Lord, to get reward or to suffer loss. And Lord, before we do what we do, may we think about, is that really what I'm going to offer as an excuse? Really? Father, help us to think, we pray. Bless us. We ask as we go home, give us a good week this week. Thank you for the beautiful day that you've given us. Thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to come back to church. Lord, probably preach through the choir, but Lord, help us to take heed lest we also fall. Lord, we pray. Give us a good week, we ask now. In Jesus' name, we pray and ask these things. Amen and amen.